All right, so just one more example here of using trig functions in a word problem. So suppose we've got a balloon and it's hovering 800 feet above a lake. And suppose we've got a little crew on a boat here. And suppose, uh, so maybe they're moving here right to left. So suppose um, they look upwards at an angle of 20 degrees initially and they're able to see the balloon. And then 25 seconds later, uh, the crew actually has to look up at an angle of 65 degrees to see the balloon. We want to figure out how fast uh, this, this boat is traveling. All right, so, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of a tricky problem here. I'm going to kind of think about two little right triangles that have been made by this balloon in the boat. So um, we know it's 800 feet tall. Um, when the boat is sort of cl uh, when the boat is closer to the balloon, that's when it's making this angle of 65 degrees. Again, we know the height here is 800. Uh, maybe we can call the width x. At the you know sort of the start of the problem, um, the boat is a bit further out there and we said that was an angle of 20 degrees alright so there it is uh, our angle of 20 degrees but again we know that we're at a height of 800 so maybe we can call that distance y so if you think about um, our trig functions well we can say tangent of 65 degrees would be the opposite which is 800 over the adjacent which would be x Likewise, for our other right triangle here, we could say that tangent of 20 degrees, again, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So all I'm going to do simply is figure out our values here for x and y. So it says x, we could multiply both sides. Uh, we could multiply both sides by x. And that'll give us x times tangent of 65 degrees equals 800. So if we divide both sides by tangent of 65 degrees, we'll get x equals 800 over tangent of 65 degrees. Likewise, uh, if we multiply by y and then divide by the tangent of 20 degrees, we'll get that y equals 800 over tangent of 20 degrees. So I'm going to simplify these down a little bit. So okay, so we're certainly going to be approximating uh, here a little bit. So tangent of 65 degrees. Let's see, tangent of 65 degrees. I'm getting that to be roughly. So approximations from here on out. Um, I'm getting tangent of 65 degrees to be roughly 2.14. So if we take 800 and divide it by 2.14, uh, we'll get x to be roughly equal to 373.83. All right, um, if we look at the other one, if we do y, we find our value for y. So we'll take tangent of 20 degrees. Tangent of 20 degrees, I'm getting that to be roughly 0.364 after rounding. So 800 divided by 0.364, I'm getting that to be 2,197.80. Um, and everything, I believe, was in feet. So uh, let's go ahead and stick our units on there. So both of these distances are in feet. All right, so what we know then is if we go back to our original picture here, we've now figured out that our total distance, this original total distance uh, between the boat and this horizontal distance between the boat and the balloon, we figured out that, that entire distance was again uh, 2197.80. But we figured out this little distance, uh, sort of the shorter distance, was 373.83 feet. So we're just going to simply figure out the distance that the boat traveled by using those two values. So the distance that the boat traveled would simply be the difference between these two. So the boat traveled. So 2197.80 minus 373.83. Again, all this is in feet. Um, let's do the old arithmetic here. So 
3.8, and if we subtract away 373.83, I'm getting this to be uh, 1,823.97 feet. Okay, so that's the distance that the boat traveled. And let's see, the boat, uh, so now we're going to turn this back into, we're going to use the time that was involved. So uh, the boat did this in 25 seconds. Okay, so this was the distance traveled in 25 seconds. So that means to figure out the distance traveled per second, So if we want to figure out the distance per second, we would just take this value and simply divide that by 25. So let's see, when I divide that by 25, I'm getting this to equal 72 point, uh, we'll round off to 96 feet per second. All right, so now all I'm going to do is simply convert this into miles per hour. So we know that we've gone 72.96 feet uh, per one second. And all I'm going to simply do is, again, just uh, relate this to um, back to how fast the boat's traveling uh, per hour. So we do this many feet per second. Well, let's see, there's 60 seconds per one minute. And then there's one minute, or excuse me, 60 minutes per one hour. So the seconds and the minutes, those would all cancel off. So really we've got 72.96. We'll multiply that by 60 and by another 60. And that'll give us how many feet it covers per one hour. So let's see. So 72.96. 96 times 60 times another 60. This is going to give us 262656 feet per hour. But if we want to simply convert that into uh, miles per hour, remember that there's uh, 5,280 feet. That's the same thing as one mile. So if we take our 262656, that's how many feet it covered. So if we divide that by 5280, that'll give us how many uh, miles it covered in that one hour. So let's see, 262656, if we divide that by 5280, I'm getting this to be roughly equal to 49.7, I'm going to round off, 75 miles per hour. And we've been rounding a lot, so let's even just round up. So this boat is roughly moving at 50 miles per hour.